So welcome to our, um, our BPD virtual art show, Artist Roundtable. Uh, my name is Paula Tusiani Eng, and I'm um, the executive director of Emotions Matter coming to you here in New York. Um, and I just want to welcome you to this event. Emotions Matter is a 501c3 nonprofit organization founded in 2015 by those with lived experience of BPD, family members, and clinicians to support, educate, and advocate for those impacted by BPD. Our vision is to create a world in which every person impacted by BPD has the resources and treatment that they need to achieve a meaningful recovery. And, and we also aim to change the conversation and to raise awareness about BPD to break the stigma. If you'd like to know more about Emotions Matter, we encourage you to go to our website at www.emotionsmatterbpd.org. Before I turn it over to Ellen, I just want to um, offer some acknowledgments for our art show this evening. Um, last February, I distinctly remember in the beginning of February, we were incredibly excited. I was able to secure a gallery in New York City to host this one week art show to raise awareness about BPD. And if you know anything about art in New York City, it's virtually impossible to get a gallery to donate a week of art space. And it was a full room, plus we were gonna be holding a conference there to be part of the art show. Um, and so of course, uh, when COVID happened, uh, we booked the art show for the week of October 15th and when COVID happened obviously the, the gallery closed and we were no longer able to have an in-person event. But we put it out to our uh, amazing art committee who met in June and we said okay what do we do now and everybody felt so strongly in the middle of a global health pandemic that it was very important for us at Emotions Matter to create spaces for creativity and for expression and for us to continue to provide an opportunity for those with lived experience to be able to share their story through art to raise awareness and give back. And so um, our amazing, again, committee of volunteers came up with a way to do it virtually. And so I just wanna acknowledge those people now because it certainly takes a village and we wouldn't have been able to do it without our village who's from all over the country. Um, I wanna especially thank um, Melissa Ferdinando, our events chair, Jody Harwood out in Michigan, who helped do some early uh, feedback on the event, Annie Bao, who created the, flower, uh, the flyer, Kathy Dishner, who helped write all the bios, reading through all the applications, Jill Roy, who's one of our curators out in California, Ellen Matezzi, our moderator and curator also. Um, thank you, thank you, Ellen, for helping us to figure out how to make this be virtual. <laughs> um, and Susan Cappy as well. Uh, thank you to also Visibly Present Designs, our designer who's currently working on a book now uh, so that we can have this art available on our website soon. And the Pro Bono Partnership for the legal releases for us to have this show and to the Francesco and Mary Giambelli Foundation for their generous gift to support the costs associated with this show. And finally, and most importantly, we wanna thank our artists, we wanna express gratitude for those who cor courageously shared their art and their story with us to make this show possible. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ellen and before I do so, I would like to just introduce her. Ellen is originally from New Jersey, Ellen Matezzi, and she's been a professional artist for more than 30 years. She's done book and editorial illustration and designed over 1200 murals in New York, LA and the Bay areas and worked as a theatrical puppet master and union carpenter. Her work has been shown in galleries in New York and California. She's now an art teacher for kids in grades two through 12 and is the director of operations at the O'Hanlon Center for the Arts in Mill Valley, California. She lives in Mill Valley with her husband, Mike, and is also a professional artist has two daughters who are starting their careers as an actor and a songwriter. Her introduction to BPD was uh, about seven years ago when a family member was diagnosed. And while not getting the answers she was seeking from the medical world to explain what was happening in her life, she got connected to Emotions Matter and some of our resources and publications. And she's indebted to Emotions Matter for giving her awareness and strength to move forward and redesign her life and life for her family. And she has been um, our art expert. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen, and I turn it over to you. Thank you. Well, first of all, um, I just want to really quickly say, you know, thank you to everybody. First, for allowing me to 
look at all this work and, and um, allow me to be a person who, you know, curates or analyzes, which really doesn't mean much of anything, to be quite honest, because everybody has their own perspective and their own opinions. And so just as a note to any of you who are new with this art world, whether someone chooses your art, doesn't choose your art, likes it or doesn't like it, doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Um, it's so personal all the way up to very high professionals. So um, really what you should be celebrating is the fact that you're doing the art and that you're sharing it. That's actually the most challenging part. And I appreciate um, being able to learn a little bit about each of you and, uh, and see a little bit into, you know, your minds, your souls, however you want to put it, the, the, the work is really beautiful and it's honest and it's humble. And, um, and I think you'll see when we go through it that it really represents a range of um, BPD and, and, and how it affects your life from the beginning to having it for several decades and all the challenges that come with that. And that was something I thought was, was really great is that it, it showed uh, it was almost like a time travel, you know, so you could see that this, uh, this illness, which causes a lot of pain to a lot of people, um, is something that is really a process, and it just keeps going and evolving and changing. And I think that's what's really uh, the most important thing to see when you look at the art is that there's more to come, you know, there's hills and valleys, but it just keeps going and keeps going like, like anyone else's life. Um, and so I appreciate all of you, all of the artists sharing that. Um, how we're going to do this is uh, I basically sent all the artists questions. Um, and uh, I'll actually, I'll read them to you first so that uh, I don't have to necessarily read them each time, but I can review them, of course, if any artist needs. But I basically, um, what we're going to do is go through each piece. And uh, I sent the artist questions um, First, I want you to tell me just a little bit about yourself, as much as you want to share. Um, where, uh, where you, where you live, what your history is, what your interests are, whatever you'd like to share about yourself. Um, as far as the piece, um, I'd love to know the inspiration for your piece. I think everybody would love to know that. Um, I know we have little bios and descriptions on the website, but you definitely have a chance here to elaborate and tell us. Uh, much more than you were even able to write. Um, I'd love to know if this is the first time that you addressed BPD through a visual uh, kind of um, medium. If it's something that you've done for the first time, what did you learn? How was it? And if it's something that you've done for a while, um, what does it do for you? Do you find it's, you know, a form of expression? Do you use it in therapy? Do you you know, do you use it privately in journals just to work through your own thoughts? I think um, if you're willing to share what it does for you, I think that's very beneficial for everybody else. Um, and do you think you'll continue to make more art after this? Um, was it good for you? I'd, I'd love to know that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through um, each artist and um, basically go through those questions. And obviously I'll, I'll say them again, but this is supposed to be a celebration. So while I know some of the issues in these images are hard issues and very serious, um, you know, we're all here to celebrate the fact that you shared it and, and it's extremely giving that you shared it. So everybody here is very interested in what you have to say. <laughs> you know, we, we, we want the support. So feel comfortable. This isn't about being formal. It's about a conversation. If anybody has questions for the artist speaking, please put them in the chat. If we have time as we go through each artist, I will try to pull in the questions or uh, Paula may pull in a question. If, we, uh, if we're getting tight on time, then I may just say, okay, we'll get to some questions at the end or we could also even send those questions to the artists at the end, but we're gonna try to get to everything as much as we can. And we have a few artists that aren't attending, and I think Paula is going to read just a, a quick bio or explanation of the piece, just so we get some perspective of, of where it's from. So this is Jody Howard's piece from Midland, Michigan. And as, as Ellen said, we invite anybody who would like to make comments in the chat to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, my purpose, this artwork depicts me holding my three daughters as babies. My purpose for healing myself 
doing the hard work in recovery is to stop the transgenerational transfer of trauma. I'm in recovery from BPD and I'm now a therapist helping others. I believe art is a powerful medium for expressing that which cannot be spoken. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this piece, One Fall, this is uh, Yaja, who is here. Somewhere in here, let's see. I would love to hear you tell us a little bit about yourself, Yaja, and, and about your piece. Uh, okay, well, hi, um, thank you. Uh, so this piece, well, for uh, a little bit about me, I'm... Um, uh, I studied art and psychology, and then I went on to study art therapy. So I come at it from a little bit of a, a more trained perspective, I guess. Uh, but what some uh, uh, in my relationship with borderline is, uh, I believe my mother is a borderline, undiagnosed. I have many traits, I think, growing up with a, a borderline parent. Uh, although I don't believe that I myself have it. But anyway, I've always used art um, to, I think, unbeknownst to me, and I think that's the secret of art, is stuff comes out that is unbeknownst to the person. Anyway, this, uh, it's about, um, I, I often have a sort of a sort of split thing in my art, which again, I was unaware of. And I think it refers to, um, kind of a split self. On one hand, I'm uh, competent and uh, intelligent and I can do things. And then on the other hand, uh, I have a lot of inner conflict, emotional uh, difficulty, you could say emotional dysregulation issues, which are, uh, you know, I'm getting a handle on, I'm in recovery for, for dealing with that. So this is about two parts of oneself. Uh, helping a self um, when you fall down, picking yourself up. Um, and this, the whole idea of the split self, and I think borderline has a lot of that. I think it pertains a lot to borderline because uh, on one hand, there's when you're okay, you're okay. When you're not okay, you don't always know that you're not okay. Uh, so the idea here is observing the self, picking yourself up, um, things moving across our, our influences from environment, stuff happening around you that you may or may not have control over, likely not. Mm -hmm. um, so that's about that piece. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask about that. You just said that at the end, what the, what the blue represents to you. And basically it seems like, like you said, all of these outside elements that are kind of floating around at all times that you can't control. Yeah, outside yeah. elements, but also uh, inside elements in terms of the thoughts, the negative, well, the self-talk, the thoughts that are maybe um, uh, not helpful, or just the, the emotional dysregulation that, um, that you're unaware of. It's just like things are coming at you, emotions, thoughts, feelings, just stuff is just coming at you externally and internally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and watching it, you know, is very helpful, right, to be able to step outside and watch it pick yourself up, but also being it. It's a weird thing, right? To, to watch yourself go through it and be in it at the same time, which is a lot pertaining to um, BPD recovery issues, right? Mm -hmm. As I understand. Right. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. It's very beautiful, colorful, expressionist kind of piece. I love it. It's really beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, so this one, let's see. Um, Allison could not be Allison here. Allison could be here, correct? Yes. Okay. So um, I will read her description. So this okay. piece is called Step by Step. This is Allison from Pompton Lake, New Jersey. Um, and uh, her description is Ada, Abraham Maslow said, In any given moment, we have two choices to step forward into growth or to step backward into safety. 
Living with BPD can feel like an endless cycle of one step forward, two steps back. Even as you take steps back, don't be discouraged. Keep going every day and one step at a time. Recovery and healing are possible. Absolutely. Great, thank you. Okay, and um, Danielle also could not uh, join us tonight um, from Shelton, Connecticut, the red string of connection. Um, one of the metaphors that my therapist suggested was the red string theory. Though we're no longer together when therapy ended, I believe we are always held together by an imaginary red string. I envision this artwork using a real red string with our hands holding onto it together. I felt lost at one time and I feared the days without my therapist's words, without my safe place in her presence. I was scared of how I would move forward without her. I held on to her, our red string and I will forever keep her in my mind and in my heart as she will always have a special place in my life. I dedicate this work to my therapist. Nice. Okay, so Lauren is here. Yes, I am here. Hi. Can everyone hear me? We can. Okay, great. So hi. hi. Um, my name is Lauren. I'm from Scarsdale. Um, I am a mental health counselor and I specialize in borderline and DBT. Um, I also have borderline myself and I'm in recovery. So something I do to, as a, my own coping skill is I have a craft night once a week with my friend and we just create different, um, different forms of art. Um, I actually wasn't sure which to enter in this because um, they're just very different forms. Like this right here is a collage, but um, I also make like jars, um, which is kind of like 3D art. Um, I also paint, but I felt this was most representative of my borderline um, and my journey. So the piece itself um, has a light side and a dark side. Um, the light side is taking over the dark side, showing that my healing is overtaking my pain and suffering. Um, there's parts of the dark side kind of bleeding in or shattering in because they're shattered pieces into the light um, to kind of represent that even though there is light, there are still some dark aspects. Um, let's see. The butterfly represents transformation. Um, the flowers kind of represent growth. Um, the lungs on the dark side kind of have butterflies in them, so they kind of represent, you know, the feeling of anxiety and negative feelings that come along with it. And then I know they don't look dead, but <laughs> they're supposed to be dying butterflies coming out of the lungs. Um, so yeah, that's the gist of my piece. Um, but I find art is a great coping skill um, for me, for my patients, and um, it's something I use daily to keep myself grounded and stay in recovery. Mm -hmm. Well, I think first of all, dedicating one night a week, uh, most artists don't get that much, I mean like professional like artists don't get that much time to dedicate to their art, so that's fantastic. Um, and the fact that you share it with other people, I, th I that's incredible. Um, I think that needs to be done more. You're really doing a service with that. Um, I think this piece is so beautiful. And what I found really interesting, which is a little different, see, and this is why like interpreting art is so um, personal and every person that looks at it uh, will see something different. I did see the light and dark, but what I, noticed also in looking at it was that even though all of your dark pieces on the right it, in what you're saying represent uh darkness these floating clouds and these butterflies and all of these things you put in there they to me they represent something about um not only about light and airiness but also things that change very very quickly you know clouds changing shape butterflies changing shape so in a way, I found this incredibly optimistic, you know, because um, even though it may be interpreted as dark, it seems um, it's, it's not stuck, you know? Like yeah. you, have an, you have an optimism in there that is really obvious. 
And it's interesting that the colorful part that you say is positive is so grounded, right? You have flowers and things in the ground that, um, that represent the, the goodness or the healthiness, however you want it, whatever words you want to use. So um, it, it shows so much about um, your perspective. And I think your optimism, even through the, the dark part of this work, I think is, is really beautiful. Um, and I don't know if you have shown your work professionally or put it into galleries, but I can tell you by looking at it, I know many galleries that would love work like this. So if you wanted to show in oh, some okay. galleries, let me know. Because I, so I definitely I'd love to. I, yeah. I just never believed in my art enough to share it honestly before this. I never really looked at myself as an artist or super creative. I just kind of, you know, kept it to myself. I mean, my family, of course, says nice things, but they're my family. So, <laughs> you know. Yes, I do but, know that feeling. <laughs> that means a lot. Um, but on one last note, um, I was just going to say that maybe the darkness seems more positive because um, the big message I'm trying to send out is that without my darkness, I never would have become a mental health professional. Um, I never would have been drawn to this field and um, it's my life purpose and it's just so important to me. So, mm -hmm. so that's the big message. Yeah. Well, Can I say good. something about this piece? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just find it is so, I'm, I, the words well integrated come to me. Like it's all so somehow everything fits in with everything else so nicely. It's like there's, I don't know. I just, just find it very, um, just so well integrated. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. It's true. Thank you, Lauren. This is beautiful. Yes, definitely yeah. contact me. Definitely. I would love to help you. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, just... let's see. Next we have uh, Lisa. So Lisa, first of all, let me just say also that I'm so jealous of all of you being so young and gorgeous. The first thing I thought of when I saw you is like, oh my goodness, you all have so many decades of art ahead of you. And I'm, and I feel like my clock is ticking like, oh my God, I only have like 40 years left to make art. So I'm like so excited for all of you, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm just so happy for you guys. Hi, um, Hi. my name is Lisa. Um, my pronouns are they, them. And um, I am a queer self-taught artist. I'm from New York City. And I specialize in tattoo artwork, um, but I also um, do mixed media, um, graphic design, um, painting, drawing, um, photography, and I just made my first clothing line. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I uh, have borderline personality disorder. I've been diagnosed for around three to four years now. And um, I'm currently in intensive therapy and for the past two years and um, and I've, for the first time in a long time, have found hope. And um, so one of my drawings is about hope and one of my drawings is about my demons. So I'll start with the first one. Um, so demons is in my head is a about my negative, obsessive, intrusive thoughts that sort of take over my head. And in the past two years, I've been in therapy and I've, you know, um, I've gotten a lot better. But when I was drawing this a year ago, I was in a lot of pain and I was um, consistently being bothered by those demons in my head and was felt very still and dissociated and um and sort of stuck and um i draw about bpd because uh it's something that's a part of me and it's helped me in my life because um when i started drawing and or did mixed media like made collages or anything like that it was an outlet that um, I was doing that was a positive out outlet. It wasn't something that was negative and it made me happy. 
And at the same time, I um, was able to become a tattoo artist, which changed my life and made me happy. And I, um, and that happened from drawing and starting to draw. And my other piece, Love Yourself, is, is about um, hope and, but also about how important it is to love yourself, but also how difficult it is to fall in love with yourself. And that is something that I'm experiencing now and have been experiencing with my identity that's been changing for years and years. But something that I hope for is to be comfortable in my own body and mind and um, love myself for who I truly am. And that's really difficult but I want to give hope to others that there is a possibility of healing and through all your traumas, through all your negative experiences and that it is to, it is possible to one day see worth in yourself and find positivity in yourself and, um, and yeah. These are great. Well, first of all, congratulations on um, being able to work through all of what you said was a difficult time. Um, and I think, um, you know, hearing you say that you draw and paint and do tattoo art and a fashion line, I would love to see your fashion line. That would be very exciting. Mm -hmm. You should, if you're willing to, you should share, share that in the chat if there's a way for us to see it. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm sure you're aware, um, is it um, Edward Hardy, right? The tattoo artist that mm -hmm. has, uh, I mean, he just basically created the tattoos that he loved that, was, that, that were him. And now he's on hats and clothes and tattoos. And, and um, uh, you know, there's so many ways that you can share these kinds of pieces. Um, I could definitely see that love yourself piece um, tattooed on many people. Yeah, um, actually, demons is my in my head is tattooed on someone. Is it? And, yeah, and they also have BPD. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's very. I mean, tattoos are very powerful, and I and I think you, um, if it's something you love to do, you have an opportunity to really help people express what they want to express yeah. and carry something around with them. Yeah, uh, that reminds them of themselves. You know, yeah. whether it's about loving yourself or identity and. Um, I live right outside of San Francisco in a very old hippie town. So um, we're, we're like very free to be here. Like if you identify as a duck, you're a duck. We're like, okay, you're a duck. Like we don't care. So, um, you know, it's all about surrounding yourself with people who make you feel good and you being the person that helps other people feel, feel good. So um, I think it's fantastic that you shared this art. I think that you have a great power in you and um you know it yes it gets hard it there are some days when it gets hard and even if you're not suffering from bpd i always tell everyone i've been married for 23 years and i say oh everything i've done especially marriage is hills and valleys and hills and valleys and it's just about moving forward and having an, an outlet like this where you can create and you can help other people i i think you have such a gift here it's a gift. It's really a gift. Um, it's, it's really wonderful. So thank you. Okay. Um, the next piece, Eliza yeah. is not here. So I'm just going to read it uh, quickly so we can get to the artists who are here. Um, Eliza Vickery is from Quezon City, uh, the Philippines. I don't like how I am, but I like myself better when I'm with you. This artwork shows a woman laying on bed on a bed while the man is doing his work nearby. It may look like a typical scenario, but it conveys more than the eyes can see. There's a deeper emotional level that can be felt. People with BPD, no matter how much love they receive, occasionally feel otherwise. Feelings of emptiness creep in and fears of being abandoned for no reason arise. And all of these emotions alienate the ones we love the most. Our loved ones wonder why their love is not enough. BPD is like, a relationship termite. No one wants it, but, but occasionally it just finds its way 
through to affect both the sufferer and the caregiver alike. Participating in this art show means a lot to me because I want to dedicate my art to those who love me and care for me. I hope through my art they can feel the love and appreciation that sometimes I find hard to express. Mm -hmm. And the next piece also, Annie unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight, Annie Bow from Stamford, Connecticut, Salvation. As someone who has struggled with borderline personality disorder for more than two decades, I do not exaggerate when I say that I was saved by dialectical behavioral therapy. In the most defining ways, DBT is my savior and my religion. The hope and solace DBT has brought me brings to mind one word loud and clear, salvation. Not only is this piece a very raw and vulnerable expression of my struggles with BPD, it is a statement of affirmation about the effectiveness of DPD as, a, as DBT as a treatment that can aid others toward recovery. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we have, um, is it Yale? Am I pronouncing that? Yael. 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 Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. So yeah, we'd love to hear about you and your piece. This is really beautiful. Oh, yeah. So the um, heart of Vi a viper symbolizes the many layers of pain held within one's heart and holding on to the hopes of a better future. I, when I made this piece, I don't, I honestly don't remember the feelings that I was feeling at that time. And the funny thing is about, at least with me and my BPD experience, I, 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 oh yeah, I have BPD is it could affect me so much, but once that session of it affecting me has, um, once it's over, I might not remember that time when it affected me, which is very strange because I could see just from that, that there's a lot of pain in there, but there's also, uh, you know, no one won the tic-tac-toe within that head of that person. Mm -hmm. um, but you're stuck, surrounded by darkness within a cage. There's no way out, out, but there's still a flicker of light trying to guide you to find the combination lock to open the lock. You're locked from leaving this cage, this jail, but there is a code that if you find it, you can get out. For some people, it could be the salvation through like Marsha Linham's book, but there's, there's a way out, but you need to find it. Mm -hmm. And so there's like a little bit of a flashlight and slowly the person in there is, is finding it. This is a sequel piece to um, the House of Viper piece, which was also in the Emotions Matter uh, art show. And it's also one of my favorite pieces that, you know, I think I'll eventually want to put, you know, make myself a pair of leggings. I put this on and walk around it. It's mm -hmm. just, it, it, I really like this piece. It's like edgy, painful, hopeful all at the same time. And in a lot of ways that it is who I am. I, I put, I depict, I transcribe the emotions and the pain onto paper, into song, into everything. And that's my life within the heart of the Viper. Wow. This is really beautiful and complex, really complex. So you were, you did say that you have other pieces. Yeah. Um, th this is something that you do often um, while you're in a, a tough spot or in tough, tough spots you feel, or do you do it when you're feeling well also? Um, you know, my mom always asked me why, like, cause I also make, um, performance pieces and different things. Why any of my pieces aren't happy? <laughs> you know, you, I think emotions of any genre deserve to have their say and if it's done in a way that it gets it out of your system and you feel it and you feel that it's addressed it is it is happy because you feel good mm -hmm. um but hmm I, well, I, I, yeah go ahead i'm sorry uh sorry i lost my train of thoughts <laughs> i i am not one to think that artwork has to be happy and i think your mom saying that Coming from a mom's perspective, it's because moms want you to be happy. 
And it makes us, it makes our world easier. But we all know that it can't be happy all the time. And expressing yourself when you're not happy is just as important. Um, Emily. Um, Okay, can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? (laughs) Yes. Okay. Um, Hi, I'm Emily. Uh, I'm from Levittown uh, in New York. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was diagnosed with borderline personality about four years ago now. Um, So I'm four years into recovery, which is great. Uh, Doing my dialectical behavioral therapy all the time, 24-7. I use art as a therapeutic um, tool. Uh, I'm getting a lot more into digital art as of lately. Um, I've done uh, a lot of uh, canvas art in the past, but uh, this is actually part of a a series I did. Um, There's two other pieces, but the other two pieces are a little more graphic um, than I wanted to share in this show, Um, but they they are on my Instagram. Um, And uh, this piece basically relates to um, back four years ago, uh, which is kind of the start of my journey with BPD. Um, I had a, a really intense um, attempt on my life and I uh, survived that attempt. Um, and the doctors were, you know, amazed because it was very shocking. I was in the hospital for a very long time. Um, and then I was finally diagnosed with borderline personality and it, a lot of the things started coming together. But this piece is kind of about um, the confusion between that time of, you know, being in the hospital, being on a lot of drugs, um, a lot of uh, morphine or fentanyl and Mm -hmm. um, things to keep the physical pain away. Um, So that along with all the other things going on in my mind at the time led to this rush of confusion and ecstasy and just all like everything all at once and honestly that kind of is what bpd is like is just feeling everything all at once um so i really wanted to just draw what i felt like at that moment like distorted um like in my eyes as you can see i i constantly heard the beeping of the like the the monitors in the background at the hospital um and the, the static noise around me um the iv was constantly an annoying thing that I was, I, I would try to rip it out, but then I, you know, the nurses would come and they would, you know, calm me down. Um, and then I, I was, you know, like the galaxy part, it felt like I was in this whole other world and everybody else was in reality. And the reality was that I, I was in the hospital and that this was a real thing, but it, that is also kind of represents that sometimes I feel like I'm in my own reality and everybody else is in their own reality as well. Um, I'm, I'm not too great at explaining my pieces. I kind of just draw I think you're pieces. doing an amazing job. Um, I think, and I'm, I'm thrilled that you're here um, and thrilled that you shared this. I mean, you, you, you just were incredibly humble and, and helpful to all the people watching and all the people that see this. I know there are a lot of people that will relate to this for sure. Um, So along with helping yourself, you're definitely helping other people. I know, I know there are people that are seeing this and relating to this and getting some kind of validation that um, this is real and this happens and that there are other people out there. So this is, this is important to share and, and you explained it incredibly well. So Mm -hmm. I think, I think this is a great piece. I'm, I'm really happy that you shared it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Zoe's the last artist we have here, right? Mm-hmm. For the moment. Okay. So um, hi. Me... Can Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I've been having um technical and, difficulties. And My, I should um... say that Zoe is. It's like almost one o'clock in the morning in England. So, kudos to Zoe for for participating tonight. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, my screen just went completely black but I'm glad you can hear me. Um, and so we I've been having a miniature people. panic attack, just like, <laughs> please let them be able to hear me. But um, yeah, so I can't see anything, but that that's maybe um, it relates back to the piece of art I did, where you feel sort of in the dark, all of this is going on around you. You feel scared, excited all at once. So it's very meta, <laughs> everything's, yeah. Um, I think my piece mainly came from wanting to describe 
to people what it feels like to have this emotional intensity and overwhelm. I think one of the hardest things being diagnosed with BPD is people around you don't understand what it feels like. It's really difficult to explain to somebody that's never had to deal with that intensity or that overwhelm. Um, and I think art is a really useful tool to be able to visually show somebody um, give them a deeper understanding and help them relate to you without having to get all stressed and confused with using loads of words and yeah that's that's basically where this piece comes from mm -hmm. and have you created a, a lot of artwork for for the purpose of communicating that or for your own purposes I use art mostly as like a distraction or something to to keep me busy to feel like I'm being productive when I don't feel like I can be. Um, art has always been a constant throughout my life, something that that makes me happy, even when I feel like it's really difficult to be happy. Um, I did a little bit of art therapy, but recently I've, I've discovered that I just need to create. And as long as I'm creating, I feel like I have a purpose. And if I feel like I have a purpose, I feel like I have a place and I have an important role and I can help others. And um, it's really interesting hearing everybody talk actually so many people have gone into mental health professions um, and it's a dream of mine to be an art therapist um, so it's really it's lovely to hear everybody's stories and and how they've overcome and been able to help others with their experiences absolutely and and you also I mean just do what you're doing is is art therapy for other people who are listening and for you and um you definitely have to keep doing it. I love that you combine visuals and words. Uh, aside from it being a beautiful, colorful piece of art, it's very powerful. And um, whether you choose to continue to share them or whether you can choose to be an art therapist or not, absolutely keep doing it for you. Um, Thank you, yes, that means that, a lot. Yeah, there, it's a really beautiful piece and I can tell that there's so much of you in it. Um, it definitely speaks. Thank Definitely. you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we had two pieces that we didn't get to uh, share, but I would I would like to. Unfortunately, I you know in the interest of um, communication to to our panelists, and we had some IT issues tonight. So even though we had many people registered to attend the webinar, there was an issue with getting in. So um, if those that are attending would like to post some questions or comments. Um, in our chat box, we'd be happy to ask those questions to any of the artists or they can be general questions. Feel free to do that now. Um, and, um, or we can go back and look at the two other pieces or, or our panelists can also uh, comment if you'd like to comment on, on the experience of uh, being a part of the show and participating and hearing your fellow artists. Uh, I hear, I'm just going to go back and uh, look, I'm just uh, seeing that Nancy said the work so far is very powerful. It's left me speechless. Um, Frank said, I'm just blown away by both the art and the discussion of the art. It shows how communication, both visual and verbal, is so important to the human experience and to connectedness. Congratulations to the artists. Um, uh, let's see. Yaja, uh, I don't know if I said it right. Emily, you explained your fabulous piece really well. I agree with everything Ellen said about relating to it. Um, Rosa said, gorgeous and colorful art and full of emotions. Sarah said, I'm so grateful to have heard the artists talk about their ideas about their work. I wonder if any of the artists talk about the physical experience of the actual making of the art. Would anyone like to answer that question or? Oh, oh, you could hear me. <laughs> oh, I, keep, I keep reading over that. The yeah. mute, a lot of these things, the mute things goes off. I'll just say when you're making the art, especially if you're, uh, if something has triggered that um, creative process, and I know I'm using the word trigger, which is might be a triggering word, but it, it could also be positive too. The fuel to the artistic process, like it feels like you get all this like 
energy that it's like adrenaline but it's used for creative purposes and then your hands just start moving your brain just starts working and you wish that you had the same kind of energy and focus like when you're taking tests at school but when you're able to do that it just comes alive it's like you're the doctor and your art is the frankenstein made out of all these different um parts of you which makes the art that is that version of the frankenstein but it's your art that's i guess an analogy that i could use <laughs> wow and a very visual analogy yeah very visual you even speak visually <laughs> interesting so so I, I, I want to say that um, just about process and, and feeling, I have um, a different experience of making art, which is uh, something I'm really trying to get over. Um, and I think, uh, Yael, you're, you know, you're talking about peak uh, experiences and flow, which is really great because I have so many critical voices I refine and change and nothing is ever good enough. And I have such a hard time um, shutting down those critical voices. So I rework, I rework and I get all frustrated. Um, and that's, that's a process like I'm trying to uh, not be in that, but it's something. So, so in a way it is a manifestation of my own critical stance because I'm I'm disliking it and it is me and so I'm disliking me and my critical voices and self uh, negation and blah 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 so I'm trying to uh, really flip that around so sometimes I have those nice flow things that that you had mentioned yeah but uh, a lot of time my process is is battling with myself, which is, I think, a, a very strong uh, BPD trait. And also a very strong artist trait, whether they have BPD or not. I mean, every artist, that's, that's sort of the life of being an artist. And there's, there's a definite difference between being an artist and having an artist as a career. So I know some of you, I've heard people say, well, I am an artist, but not really an artist, or I want to be one. Being an artist is no different than having the identity of he, she, they, whatever. It's, it's part of who you are. Doing art as a career is something different. One can influence the other, but the true life of an artist is to not be satisfied with everything around them and to find ways to create something new or uh, experience it or express it in a different way. So um, you are all artists, no question. Um, has nothing to do with you could be a barista and be an artist it doesn't really matter they don't they don't cancel each other out um so yeah definitely it could be i mean i don't have bpd myself but i can tell you that's definitely the the mentality and the emotional existence of an artist for sure um, I just want to share a few more comments and questions. Um, Karen says, seeing the artwork is such an immediate way of learning and understanding how these incredible artists feel. Thank you all so much. Um, another individual says, I can't draw or paint to save my life. All of the work is amazing. I thank all of them for sharing their art and their perspective. One of the common themes I heard from all of the artists is that they have used art as a form to express the overwhelming emotions that BPD individuals experience. My question is, have you always been art artistically inclined even before you knew what BPD was? And have you always used your emotions to drive your work? Would maybe someone that hasn't responded yet want to answer that or? Um, I, I can answer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, for me, uh, art has always been a safe space. Um, and I think that is the case for not only people with BBD, but people with depression or anxiety or any type of mental illness. Um, I think a lot of the time, whether it's music or physical art, uh, painting, um, uh, whatever type of art form you work with, I think 
for me, at least, it, it's a safe space. It's somewhere where I've always been able to go and fully express myself without judgment. Um, and which is hard because when you have BPD, you often have to put on a mask sometimes or put on kind of a facade because you don't want to let your full emotions take control or let everybody see, you know, the extent of everything you're feeling at the moment because it's not normal compared to everybody else. But what I've learned is that, you know, through my art, um, I, it doesn't matter as long as, you know, my art continues to be my safe space and it continues to be um, something that I just can always come back to and I can always do no matter how I'm feeling, um, no matter what I'm feeling, whether the emotion is extremely painful or I'm feeling extremely happy. So that, that's how I feel on it. Thank you. Um, we have another comment here, which is, let's see, um, all of these pieces from Sarah, all of these pieces brought out so much emotion. I've never been so touched by a collection of art. It makes me feel so validated. And from Nolani, this is a, so beautiful and very help to me, very helpful for me as someone who loves someone with BPD. I appreciate all of your honesty. You are all so beautiful. So uh, incredible comments. Um, I hope that our artists um, had a positive experience. We thank you for answering. Sometimes it's hard to ask to talk about your work. It's one thing to create your work, but to get up in front of other people and talk about your work is, it takes, I think, a lot of courage to do that. So we appreciate your being with us tonight. Um, this is very different than the gallery experience that we had a few years ago or that we would have had. Um, so we appreciate your, your coming out in this virtual space and sharing your work with us. Um, we at Emotions Matter, you know, one of the things that's interesting as a sidebar is that, you know, um, we know from our members, like all of you who come to our meetings and say how art is so helpful in their recovery, which is why we provide these safe spaces and we promote the arts. But when people go into treatment, a lot of art therapy is not often offered or it's not often sort of encouraged to, to be part of treatment. So uh, we want to advocate for that. You know, we want to be able to be a platform to advocate for what people need to recover. And certainly we know from people um, at the very basic level, being able to create and express yourself can be part of what we've heard tonight, building identity, building sense of purpose. You know, it, it helps you move forward and it helps you distract. I mean, there's so many different benefits to art. So thank you for reminding us of that. And hopefully we can continue to be doing that as a community. At Emotions Matter, we do have workshops where we invite those impacted by BPD to express themselves. We have a writing workshop that is happening once a month. We also have occasional art workshops. Another one is coming up actually with Lisa who was here tonight. Um, uh, in two weeks uh, on the 28th. So for our artists, be sure to check back to Emotions Matter for opportunities to connect with other artists um, who are impacted by BPD, but also wanna use their art um, to raise awareness. Um, and to those who are attending, thank you for your time. We will send out a survey. Uh, you'll probably receive it in your inbox tomorrow. We do ask for your feedback and we do apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, we may have successfully done the virtual art event, but we still have a lot to learn with our, with our tech, behind the scenes tech, and we will continue working at it. So thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you to all of our artists. Ellen, thank you. Thank, thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you all artists for sharing. Thank you.